Patentomatics channel. Welcome to Patentomatics channel. In our today video we are going to talk about Cotton Gin. U. S. Patent number 72X issued to Eli Whiteny in 1794. Designed to separate cotton fiber from seed, Whitney's Cotton Gin, for which he received a patent on March 14, 1794, introduced a new, profitable technology to agricultural production in America. The cotton gin is a device for removing the seeds from cotton fiber. On this day in 1794, Westboro native Eli Whitney applied for a patent on the cotton gin. Raised on a farm in Massachusetts, he invented a machine that made growing cotton so profitable that, after nearly a decade in the South, Whitney returned to New England and developed what became known as the American system of manufacture. The South became a cotton kingdom based on the labor of thousands of enslaved men and women. He designed machines that turned out standardized, interchangeable parts. These machines made mass production possible and were critical to the coming Industrial Revolution. Eli Whitney's innovations transformed the economy first of the American South and later of the North. FTER Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell. Eli Whitney is probably the inventor whose name is most familiar to Americans. Although it may overstate the case to call him, as many textbooks do, the father of American technology, Whitney was a true genius. Economic change produced a dramatic change in the nature of work. Cotton gin invention helped to transform the economies of both the South and the North in the early years of the Industrial Revolution. He had the ability to observe the world around him, identify a need, and devise a way to meet it. Born in 1764, Eli Whitney grew up on a farm in Westboro, Massachusetts. 0314.1794 When the war ended, the mechanically minded farm boy wanted to go to college. He demonstrated mechanical aptitude from an early age. By his early teens, he was already a skilled blacksmith. When the Revolutionary War caused a shortage of nails, he showed that he also had an entrepreneurial spirit. In cotton gin. He began specializing in nails, developed a nail-making machine, and then diversified into hat pins. It was the first of his many business successes. His first model failed, and it took several more months of work to perfect his invention. Eli Whitney was still a teenager when he became the New World's sole manufacturer of hat pins. Whitney arrived in the South to find that the job he had been promised had fallen through. His misfortune provided him with an opportunity. He became acquainted with the widow of the revolutionary hero Nathaniel Green. Catherine Green invited him to stay at her South Carolina plantation and urged him to make himself useful. He saw at once that inland cotton plantations were struggling to survive. Only short staple cotton with sticky green seeds could be grown, and it took so long to pick the seeds from the cotton manually that the crop was not profitable. Once again, Eli Whitney observed a need and worked out a technical solution. Please subscribe this channel. The myth is that Whitney designed the cotton gin, gin, is short for, engine, in 10 days. The reality is that his first model failed, and it took several more months of work to perfect his invention. The machine was simple it worked by pressing raw cotton against a mesh screen, the screen caught the seeds, and wire hooks on the other side pulled the cotton through. A moving brush collected the cleaned fibers. Cotton Gin, machine for cleaning cotton of its seeds, invented in the United States by Eli Whitney in 1793. The Cotton Gin is an example of an invention directly called forth by an immediate demand. The mechanization of spinning in England had created a greatly expanded market for American cotton, whose production was inhibited by the slowness of manual removal of the seeds from the raw fiber. Whitney, a Massachusetts Yankee visiting a friend in the South, learned of the problem and quickly solved it. Inspired by manual brushes invented by enslaved workers, Whitney crafted a device that pulled the cotton through a set of wire teeth mounted on a revolving cylinder, the fiber passing through narrow slots in an iron breastwork too small to permit passage of the seed. The simplicity of the invention, which could be powered by people, animals, or water, caused it to be widely copied despite Whitney's patent, it is credited with fixing cotton cultivation, virtually to the exclusion of other crops, in the U.S. South and so institutionalizing slavery. A cotton gin, meaning, cotton engine, is a machine that quickly and easily separates cotton fibers from their seeds, enabling much greater productivity than manual cotton separation. The fibers are then processed into various cotton goods such as calico, while any undamaged cotton is used largely for textiles like clothing. The separated seeds may be used to grow more cotton or to produce cottonseed oil. Handheld roller gins had been used in the Indian subcontinent since at earliest AD 500 and then in other regions. The Indian worm gear roller gin, invented sometime around the 16th century, has, according to Lacquette, remained virtually unchanged up to the present time. 
a modern mechanical cotton gin was created by American inventor Eli Whitney in 1793 and patented in 1794. Whitney's gin used a combination of a wire screen and small wire hooks to pull the cotton through, while brushes continuously removed the loose cotton lint to prevent jams. Please subscribe this channel. It revolutionized the cotton industry in the United States, but also inadvertently led to the growth of slavery in the American South. Whitney's gin made cotton farming more profitable, so plantation owners expanded their plantations and used more enslaved people to pick cotton. Whitney never invented the machine to harvest cotton, it still had to be picked by hand. The invention has thus been identified as an inadvertent contributing factor to the outbreak of the American Civil War. Modern automated cotton gins use multiple powered cleaning cylinders and saws, and offer far higher productivity than their hand-powered precursors. Cotton fibers are produced in the seed pods, bowls, of the cotton plant where the fibers, lint, in the bowls are tightly interwoven with seeds. The first cylinder has lines of teeth around the circumference, and angled against this cylinder is a metal plate with small holes, ginning ribs, through which the teeth can fit through with minimal gaps. The teeth grip the cotton as it rotates, dragging it through these small holes. The seeds are too big to fit through the holes, and are thus removed from the rotating cotton by the metal plate, before they fall into a collecting pot. On the other side of the first cylinder, there's a second cylinder, also rotating, with brushes attached. This second cylinder wipes the cotton from the first, and deposits it into the collecting bucket. The seed is reused for planting or is sent to an oil mill to be further processed into cottonseed oil and cottonseed meal. The lint cleaners again use saws and grid bars, this time to separate immature seeds and any remaining foreign matter from the fibers. The bale press then compresses the cotton into bales for storage and shipping. Modern gins can process up to 15 tons, 33,000 pounds, of cotton per hour, United States and prolonged the institution despite the social and economic impact of his invention, Whitney lost many profits in legal battles over patent infringement for the cotton gin. An improvement invented in India was the two-roller gin, known as the Cherka, Charki, or Wooden Worm Worked Roller, ab labor and help hasten the end of southern slavery. Whitney's invention made upland short cotton into a profitable crop, which strengthened the economic foundation of slavery in the United States and prolonged the institution despite the social and economic impact of his invention, Whitney lost many profits in legal battles over patent infringement for the cotton gin. Thereafter, he turned his attention into securing contracts with the government in the manufacture of muskets for the newly formed United States Army. He continued making arms and inventing until his death in 1825, coat of arms of Eli Whitney. The younger Eli was famous during his lifetime and after his death by the name, Eli Whitney, though he was technically Eli Whitney Jr. His son, born in 1820, named Eli, was known during his lifetime afterward by the name Eli Whitney Jr., Whitney's mother. Elizabeth Fay died in 1777, when he was 11. At age 14 he operated a profitable nail manufacturing operation in his father's workshop during the Revolutionary War. He prepared for Yale at Leicester Academy, now Becker College, and under the tutelage of Reverend Elizur Goodrich of Durham, Connecticut, he entered in the fall of 1789 and graduated Phi Beta Kappa in 1792. Whitney expected to study law but, finding himself short of funds, accepted an offer to go to South Carolina as a private tutor. Petitioned by Whitney to the selectmen of Westboro, Massachusetts, to run a public school, with sample of his penmanship instead of reaching his destination, he was convinced to visit Georgia. In the closing years of the 18th century, Georgia was a magnet for New Englanders seeking their fortunes, its revolutionary-era governor had been Lyman Hall, a migrant from Connecticut. Whitney is most famous for two innovations which came to have significant impacts on the United States in the mid-19th century, the cotton gin, 1793, and his advocacy of interchangeable parts in cotton gin. In the South, the cotton gin revolutionized the way cotton was harvested and reinvigorated slavery, successful implementation of the idea eluded Whitney until near the end of his life, occurring first in others' armories. Conversely, in the North the adoption of interchangeable parts revolutionized the manufacturing industry, contributing greatly to the U.S. victory in the Civil War. Cotton gin Eli Whitney has often been incorrectly credited with inventing the idea of interchangeable parts, he championed for years as a maker of muskets, however, idea predated Whitney, Whitney's role in it was one of promotion and popularizing, not invention. Whitney's gun factory in 1827 in May 1798, Congress voted for legislation that would use $800,000 in order to pay for small arms and cannons in case war with France erupted. 
It offered a $5,000 incentive with an additional $5,000 once that money was exhausted for the person that was able to accurately produce arms for the government. Please subscribe this channel. Because the cotton gin had not brought Whitney the rewards he believed it promised, he accepted the offer. Although the contract was for one year, Whitney did not deliver the arms until 1809, using multiple excuses for the delay. Recently, historians have found that during 1801 to 1806, Whitney took the money and headed into South Carolina in order to profit from the cotton gin. Although Whitney's demonstration of 1801 appeared to show the feasibility of creating interchangeable parts, Merritt Rowsmith concludes that it was staged and duped government authorities into believing that he had been successful. When the government complained that Whitney's price per musket compared unfavorably with those produced in government armories, he was able to calculate an actual price per musket by including fixed costs such as insurance and machinery, which the government had not accounted for. He thus made early contributions to both the concepts of cost accounting and economic efficiency in manufacturing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe this channel.